Hi everyone, the name's Eric Thor and today let's talk about the INFJ ghost mode. Let's talk about why INFJs disappear, let's talk about what makes an INFJ go MIA. What, let's talk about INFJs and a need for privacy. Let's talk about it because a lot of people have a lot of critique to offer against INFJs for being ghosting and for being not present with other people, from being dissociated from not being available, from not returning calls. And just imagine, we live in this kind of culture where a person is pretty much available 24-7. Facebook, always online, always active, always ready to answer any message, any call. And a phone carried around all the time and you are just supposed to answer when other people call. Yeah, you're supposed to answer immediately or to call back at least within a few minutes. And then to not answer, that's rude. That's so rude. Imagine if you were in the same room as a person and to not talk to them and to not say goodbye when you leave and all of that. Now imagine that today we're sitting in the room with everyone else all the time. Everyone else is always around. Everyone else is always here. And then why are they not answering me? Why are they not replying back? Why are they not commenting? Why are they not liking my posts? Why are they not giving me attention? Yeah... We all need, crave attention and we all want to give attention. We all want and think we deserve attention all the time, preferably immediately. Now, I want to say I do believe there are problems to INFJs going MIA. And I do believe there are issues an INFJ must confront with their tendency to go MIA. I want to talk about the issues of the ghost mode. Now, the thing is, first... INFJs are not the only types to disappear. All intuitive types tend to value privacy highly. Yeah, all INFJs, all ENFPs, all ENTPs, all ENFJs need to some extent privacy. Now how an INFJ pursues privacy, that is unique to them and to their personality type. Often the way an ENFP would do it is they would say, sorry I need space, can you go away? They would go into a room of their own. They would find something to bounce away to. They would see a guitar and then they would go play it. They would see a painting and then they would go paint. And they would go away from the group and they would channel their attention somewhere else. And preferably without anybody watching. Nobody watching me as I paint. Nobody listening to me as I play. The preferred state is to be able to do something without being watched. And to tell other people, I need space. Can you go away while I do this? Now... When an INFJ goes MIA or disappears, often it is without a notice. Often it is without letting other people know. Often it is simply deactivating Facebook, turning your phone off. Often it is simply not re responding. Yet yeah, INFJ goes so ghost that other people are left wondering if they did something wrong. And that's often where the drama and tension comes. Why won't the INFJ tell me when they need to have privacy? Why won't the INFJ let me know when they're going away? Why won't the INFJ take that time? Why won't they let me know at least? Because then it would be so much easier to handle. And often when an INFJ goes MIA, it's not that they're going away to play guitar. It's not that you're seeing, oh, they want to play the guitar now. I should let them do that. It's that the INFJ just leaves. Yeah, INFJs don't necessarily have an excuse to go private. INFJs don't necessarily have a painting pad and they don't necessarily have that like ability to channel their intuition to something and to do it in a way that is undisturbed. No, INFJs tend to need to leave to engage in their intuition. They need to get the room of their own, they need to have somewhere to develop their own interests, they need to have a place where they can form their own strong identity and to explore new ideas and all that is connected to it. Now INFJs are wandering ghosts, INFJs are detached ghosts, so it's kind of that INFJs like ghosts are people that suddenly just feel this tug to go somewhere. They're kind of just being, like imagine like uh, being beamed away. Like it's like a spaceship comes and beams the INFJ away. And it's a state of detachment for the INFJ. Privacy is detachment for the INFJ. Privacy is when the INFJ clocks out and they hear nothing, they don't see anything, they don't notice anything. They are just detached and distanced. Yeah. 
And the, all of those qualities, both the state of being distanced and the state of being detached and the state of wandering away and leaving the room or leaving the party or going out for a walk can be to some extent perceived as rude. It can be perceived as rude to leave without saying goodbye and yeah, I'm guilty. I'm guilty of that. Sorry. And it can be seen as rude to not listen and to not pay attention and to not be present with other people when they're telling you something important. It can be rude when other people call and you don't answer. And this problem has of course become just bigger because of this online culture with social media and with phones and mobile phones and everything. There is no excuse to do it anymore. I think a lot of the time in the past INFJs could simply just do it without a problem. But now it's become a problem. And I want to say what happens when, when we are allowed to engage in intuition. First, what tends to happen is we get energy, we feel recharged. Privacy gives re our ability to recharge. Privacy gives the ability to reflect on existential matters. It gives insight, it gives ideas. It gives the ability to create and explore new things. Often when we are watched by other people, we can't be as creative. Our creativity becomes constrained by the shallowness of the moment in a sense. Because often in the moment, people are looking at us and that creates and inhibits our expression. We become more scared of expressing ourselves without being judged. And we become, to some extent, less courageous. We become less at peace. And that also makes it so that we tend to become brooding or that we tend to become narrow or that we tend to become more constrained. Yeah, the ideas we share become ideas that we've heard before. We start going over the same thought over and over. We get stuck. We become so limited in our creativity. We, the limit inhibits creativity a lot. The limit of the situation, the limit of where we are right now, the limits of the reality and the limits of our history. We can't tell other people we're thinking about this because other people will say, but you used to want that. We can't do something new because other people are saying, but I like that better. And that's uh, the inhibitation effect. And that's why intuitives need privacy so much. Now with INFJ ghosting and dissociation, often I feel that one of the key problems is over-availability and over-presence. A lot of INFJs make the mistake of being overly present or thinking they need to be overly present. You don't need to be so on as you think at a party or a social environment. You don't need to constantly pay attention to someone else. You don't need to pour out energy and to focus too much or to concentrate too much on other people. It's okay to give a portioned attention to other people. It's okay to set up a form of energy boundary, a boundary where you say, okay, this is how much attention I can give to another person or this is how much I am going to make an effort to be on or to be engaging or to be fun. Yeah, you can be at the party, and you can be quiet, and you can be calm, and you can sit and relax, and you can engage with another person or a small circle at the party, and you don't have to talk to everyone, you don't have to be so loud, you can be a little more quiet if you want to, you don't have to say everything, and you don't have to speak so much. Often, if you can do that, if you can master that art as an INFJ, you won't need as much time for privacy, you won't need as much time for alone time, because you won't become drained as quickly. And beyond this, other people will actually engage and feel more at peace around you. Yeah, it can, to be around an INFJ that is overly available or overpresent can also be difficult. To have their constant intense gaze on you, to have their constant grabbing of attention, to have them be so loud with you, to have them be so fast and to be so rushed around you. It can seem like the INFJ appears stressed and restless and it can seem like the INFJ appears grumpy or frustrated in this attention. It looks like they're looking at you and they are tentative, but at the same time they look like they hate you in a sense, and that's something a lot of people can pick up on. The INFJ grumpiness and negativity in overpresence. When an INFJ is too much, is too present, they often tend to appear frustrated and they lose their peace, they lose their center. It looks like they're being distracted and that they think you're a distraction. It looks like they are considering everything you say as an annoyance and an inconvenience, but they're like, fine, I'll listen, or fine, I'll be there. And that's how an INFJ goes into sensing, with that state of frustration, with that state of restlessness and 
kind of being in a rush, that feeling of when people tell you something that you need to do it immediately, that feeling of when other people ask you for something, you have to act in this very second and you can't wait and you can't say, I'll do it in a minute. It's okay to start working on those energy boundaries to ensure that that won't happen, that you will have the peace of mind and that you will maintain energy around other people. And, of course... I think it becomes easier to take timeouts in a healthy manner and to channel your intuition when you become more aware of it. You can actually predict when it's going to happen. If you think back, you can actually predict when you're going to need it. You can start noticing the early signs. You can start noticing when you start feeling frustrated by being around other people. Often what will happen is that you will start feeling distracted. You'll start feeling like everything you hear other people say is annoying. You'll feel like you're starting to get annoyed. And often, because people shut that down, they don't recognize that warning signal. But that's a warning signal. That's a sign that you need a timeout. And you don't necessarily need a long timeout. But you need a timeout. Another sign is feeling distracted. If you start feeling distracted, or like there's too much going on, or you start feeling the early signs of overwhelm, that's also a good sign that it's time to tell people you need some space. You can basically assume that if you're going to keep being feeling distracted it's only gonna get worse if you're gonna feel keep feeling grumpy it's only gonna get worse and you're suddenly you're gonna hulk out and then you're gonna just disappear now infj detachment and infj ghosting and infj wandering mind wandering is not necessarily always looked in a positive regard sometimes people can confuse it with being something negative in itself it's nothing negative in itself but sometimes people can go that and think that the very state of it is something bad. Especially if you're dealing with SP parents or extroverted sensing types, that's when this becomes particularly problematic. They will look at it as something negative, because to them, if they would do that, that would be really negative. For an NFJ, that's something very positive. So around INFJs, this is rarely a problem. I rarely have a problem with an INFJs disappear. Around... ENFPs and the ENTPs, it's not necessarily that it's a problem as much as it is a concern. Like it's interesting and it's engaging and it's something that an ENFP or ENTP will start to worry about. Like why did they go away? What happened? What's going on? What's going on inside of their heads? But the ENFP is not necessarily bothered by it. But it's more that they will go and study it and they will start investigating and they'll start seeing if there's something that happened that they said wrong or if the, they will maybe ask you a few questions and to try to see how things are going. And I want to say in all of this, INFJs can all sometimes feel pressured to overshare when they're not ready to. INFJs can feel like other people are forcing them to answer when they need to introspect. When an INFJ is not ready to answer and other people force them to, that's not a good thing. It's never a good thing when you force an INFJ to give an answer quickly. It's never a good thing when you pressure an INFJ. Sometimes I can understand why it happens, because you simply feel scared, or because you simply feel upset or worried, and you need and you want to know that it's okay, you want to know that the INFJ is okay, and you want to know that you're good with the other person. But time is so off the essence when an INFJ is forced to share, often what they will answer you, what they will tell you will be wrong. What they tell you, that initial half insight, is not good. You need the full insight, because often an INFJ will start with the dark and then end with the good. An INFJ will start their introspective process with something troubling or something deeply pressing or with a feeling or a negativity. And they will guide and they will bring that towards something positive. And if you force an INFJ to share too early, you're asking for the dark, you're asking for the brooding, you're asking for the trouble. And that's also what you're going to get. So as an INFJ, that's also something. If other people are pressuring you to give an answer, what can you do? What do you think you can do to comfort other people, to take time for yourself when you need it, to take time to think when you need it, to take time to introspect when you need it? without hurting other people, without making them worry, without making them upset. Well, I think to some extent a lot of it has to be done early before it happens, not when it happens. When it happens it's bad to begin with, but early, like early in the process, when you start feeling the signs, let them know. When you start feeling the problems, let them know. Don't wait too long, because then it becomes bigger in other people's heads. And 
don't give them a cause to concern. Don't make it like don't give them the sign that it's that you're about to abandon them or that you're about to leave them for good and that you're never coming back. Don't give them a sign like that. Let them know that you're doing this for yourself and that you and try to give an estimation. Maybe I'll be back around that time and uh, try to find a way to channel yourself and your intuition towards something positive. That's my best advice for you. I hope this video helped you understand to some extent maybe why you take timeouts, why it's important and how you can make sure you do it with style. And I hope that other people wondering about INFJs and their ability to go missing can have some understanding towards INFJs that need to do this and why it happens. Perhaps if you notice that your INFJ is being overly present and that they're draining themselves around you. Perhaps find ways to get them to relax, find ways to get them to be less intense and to understand that they can be themselves around you. That's all for today. Thank you all for watching.